Hi, I'm Regina Spector. I'm at Amoeba. And this is what's in my bag. Well, the first thing I wanted to show you was this record. Really, it is one of those records where you just put it on and it just kind of opens up and there's no skippers, which is rare, um, even with great records. My first time ever coming out to LA uh, was in 2003 uh, when I got <laughs> onto the Strokes tour before I was signed or anything. After that tour, record labels started coming around and one person that was trying to get me signed, he brought me here. And at that time I was really broke. So record stores were like these like wonderful palaces that I would just look, you know. And he got me a CD, this blonde redhead, a melody of certain damaged lemons. It's very scratched up. I'm very excited to get it on vinyl. <laughs> so did you end up signing with him? No. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I didn't. He was very, very nice. So I ended up signing with Seymour Stein and Michael Goldstone to Sire. And this record was something that Goldie and Seymour, they put it on my iPod and they said to me, listen to the song Kooks, because that's us. So take a chance with a couple of kooks. I had such huge gaps because what sometimes happens to immigrants and refugees is they come here and then all of the money goes towards like shelter and food. Before rock stardom beckoned, Regina Spector, just nine at the time, emigrated along with her family from Russia to the United States. When we were leaving, we sold the piano and just we knew that we were coming here and we were going to be, you know, with nothing. So really a lot of the music that I was listening to was NPR, things that were on PBS, and whatever was playing in the supermarket. You know? <laughs> but this whole record I fell in love with. And, you know, songs like Changes, I mean, like Life on Mars is just one of the greatest songs ever. He's just so good, and um, and I also don't have this on vinyl. And the iPod died a long, long time ago. I was very sad. <laughs> okay, this record, um, we also don't have on vinyl in my household, but this record basically was is like, um, you know, if you'd have a, a record where you break glass, you have like emergency record. <laughs> this is it. Breathe candles in his mind, bright and tiny gems of memory. This is the Zombies, Odyssey and Oracle. This was the record that when our baby would cry, we could just put it on. One of your smile, smile for me. It was the most listened to record by far. And the most amazing thing about it was that we never ever got sick of it. I'm uh, very excited about this Duran Duran reissue. I think they're awesome and I think that their spirit, like even any time I catch like old interviews, they just seem so into exploration and new sounds, and they're just really cool band. Who is the uh, strongest sense of humor that bring you all back down to earth? None of us, we're all miserable. miserable. No. <laughs> okay, this one's for my husband. <laughs> this is part of the music education that I got from Jack.
Nobody's Fool is in my head a lot. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Cinderella. I'm, I'm like a late comer to a lot of um, metal. But I really like metal. <laughs> this is just, um, this is Leonard Cohen's greatest hits. Just looking at these in a row, I was like, oh, it would be really nice to have it. And you want to travel with her and you want to travel blind and Leonard Cohen, I just, I'm thankful that he exists. And Famous Blue Raincoat, it's just a song I go back to um, over and over. Well, I see you there with a rose in your tea. Famous Blue Raincoat has an insane edit in it. Once you hear it, you can't unhear it. And it's only like in headphones, and it's, but it's still a perfect song. And it's a perfect recording. So whatever they did, however they chose it, it's got this captured atmosphere to it that I love. Sincerely, El Cohen. Um, so Billy Joel, when my parents did get a little bit more money, we had on CD, Greatest hits. It's really a huge discovery for me. Brenda and Eddie were the popular steadies and the king and the queen of the farm. Riding around with the car top down and the radio on. For years, getting more and more into his music, I think he's an incredible songwriter. And before the pandemic happened, Jack and I did get to see one of those MSG shows. It's a happy place. <laughs> It's a very happy place. It's just so, it's good. If you like songs, you can't not like this. <laughs> this is Joanna Sternberg. People are toys to you. You'll play and play with one till you're bored and through. Joanna's from New York. It's a really, really good songwriter that I got very, very excited about. It's sort of from that tribe of like, Jeffrey Lewis, lo-fi, just, again, if you love songs. <laughs> I love songs. I pledge allegiance to songs. The evergreen, you know, debut. When I discovered Bjork, it was like, you know, human behavior comes on and you're just like, this makes absolute sense in my body. So, yeah, I'm excited to have it on vinyl. This is a staff pick. <laughs> um, this is my pick, too. I really love Beth. A really adventurous, super cool, ever-changing songwriter. The more people can sort of stretch from themselves, the more um, excited I get to kind of go down the road with them. Finally, um, I really like Guster. I don't know this record. It's called Keep It Together. Gotta write you a letter. Gotta write you a book. I wanna see your reaction. I feel like one of the fun things about being in a record store is just literally judging a book by its cover and saying, this looks cool. I'm gonna check you out. I trust you, I wanna be friends with you. So I'm, I'm gonna check this out. I'm gonna preemptively say that I'm pretty sure it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> That's so wonderful. Thank you for shopping with us. Yeah, today. thank you so much. Let the ones who want it back